Hello and welcome to Missouri 2021 Presents. I'm Beth Pike, your host for this series that airs on Zoom the first Tuesdays at 11 a.m. each Monday, uh, each month, uh, the first Tuesday leading up to the Missouri Statehood Day in August. We hope to connect you with the unique projects and events to commemorate the 200th anniversary when Missouri entered the Union as a 24th state. Um, to start the series, we're doing an overview of plans for Missouri's Bicentennial with Michael Sweeney, who has been coordinating the state's efforts to involve each and every corner of the state. Michael is a native Kansas Cityan, where he resides today when he's not crisscrossing Missouri's back roads and interstates with the Bicentennial Quilt or other Bicentennial business. Michael holds a PhD in American Studies from the University of Kansas and a master's degree in Library and Information Science from the University of Missouri. He's been a staff historian and researcher for the State Historical Society and a director of collections at the American Jazz Museum in Kansas City. All of his experience and most importantly, and for many of you joining us today who have met Michael, you know that his enthusiasm for connecting Missourians to our state's bicentennial is unmatched. We are so fortunate to have him leading this effort. And as you will hear from Michael, we're not celebrating our 200th year just to talk about our past, but importantly, who are we as Missourians? What are the ties that bind us together? And where do we go from here? Before I hand it off to Michael, as we ponder that thought, I have a couple of housekeeping items to mention first. At the end of Michael's presentation, we will open it up for your questions. At any time during Michael's talk, you can type your question by clicking on the Q&A button on the screen at the very bottom. At the end, we will take questions in the order it's received. We won't hear or see you on camera, but we will see and respond to your questions. And at the end of our program, you'll want to stick around for several prize drawings. For those who registered for today's program, we're giving away some fine Missouri Bicentennial swag, and we will also have a special drawing for those of you who stay at the end who can answer a Jeopardy-style question on Missouri statehood. Now it's time to open up the video and mic to hear from Michael Sweeney, the Missouri Bicentennial Coordinator for Missouri 2021. Michael, so far you've logged 127,000 miles in your car solely for the work of the Bicentennial since you started work about four years ago. Um, have you looked into whether there's a Guinness Book of World Records for something like that? I have not, though I know I am not the first to have traveled this way. So I am I am happy to be amongst the ranks of people who have the privilege of experiencing Missouri and all this geographic uh, diversity. So, you know, first off, my, my thanks to all of you who have, who are who are here with us uh, today. Um, I'm I'm sure some of you have have gotten to meet with me before, and and um, I'm always happy to engage again. And and for those of you who have not heard this, I hope this provides a an exciting overview of what some really exciting things that have happened in, in in the years leading up to the bicentennial, and particularly for our bicentennial year, which is just around the corner in January, um, 2021. We're spending all of 2021 um, engaging in this idea of thinking about Missouri's past, present, and future. Um, just by way of, of background, um, so um, I, I'm with the State Historical Society of Missouri, and the society was asked uh, in 2013 by the Missouri General Assembly to take a leadership role in deciding what the Missouri Bicentennial might look like. Um, you know, with this idea, we needed to develop plans and ideas and proposals for what that commemoration would look like. Um, that was many years ago, seven years ago. Um, the society did a number of focus groups to get a sense of kind of what people were interested in. So in, in St. Joe and Rolla and Cape Girardeau roundabout um, to get kind of a, again, sort of a feel for what it was people were interested in. Um, and a few things came out of that that shaped at least the way we've approached the Missouri Bicentennial. One was a desire to do something truly statewide. Uh, I say this as a Kansas Cityan. Um, you know, oftentimes things happen along the I-70 corridor. So Kansas City, St. Louis, maybe Jeff City, Columbia, right? So a question for us is what does something truly statewide even look like? What is something that would engage all 114 of our counties uh, as well as the independent city of St. Louis? That was number one. Uh, number two, we wanted a small d democratized participation, right? We wanted to kind of set it up in such a way that if you as an individual wanted to find a way to get involved, there'd be enough different opportunities for you to find a way to, to engage in this. Um, number three, we really wanted to find a way to promote the local one of the things that came out of the focus groups was just really how kind of geographically and culturally diverse our state is. Um, and also this idea that our communities are all unique. And frankly, this idea that you know your communities better than I ever will. Um, so you know how to shape this and make this a meaningful experience for your, for your communities. 
And it kind of leads us to number four, which is we wanted to promote the local, however, without being parochial, right? So we've spent less time thinking about um, kind of what, uh, what is our sameness, but trying to think about points of shared somethingness, right? Uh, for a state that is very geographically and culturally diverse, and, and sometimes this feels a little fragmented, um, I say this as a Kansas Cityan who is married to someone from St. Louis. Um, this provided an opportunity to, like I said, not necessarily to come to sameness, but find a way to share our, what is unique and different about our communities while finding ways to put those things into conversation. The last one, and I say this as speaking in you know, the state historical society, um, as much as we wanted this to be an opportunity to think about Missouri history, we wanted it to also be a moment to think about Missouri's future. Um, if all you are doing is talking about what you did 200, 150 years ago, um, that doesn't bode well for the future of your community, for your county, for your state, right? So how do we find ways to sort of pull that whole past, present, future to give sort of this, this sort of forward motion? So all of this came together in the mission statement we came up with for what we're calling Missouri 2021, and that's this, right? We think the bicentennial is an opportunity uh, to promote a better understanding of Missouri's communities, counties, regions, people past and present. And again, hopefully with this idea of thinking about our points of shared somethingness. Um, and there's all kinds of different ways that, that we're going to be able to, I think, do this. Um, and there's lots of folks who are involved. So the State Historical Society, our role in particular kind of falls along uh, these three pieces, outreach, coordination, communication. Um, and outreach is kind of, we've dedicated a number of early of the early years of this, this project to outreach. Uh, we felt there was something really important about shaking hands and sharing laughs around the table. Um, and I've had a, hopefully an opportunity for some of you who are out there in the ether that I've had an opportunity to visit with you. And it's, this is also a good time to also just thank you for welcoming me into your communities, for giving, letting, me, letting me hear your stories and kind of what's important to you, um, how this bicentennial could be important to you. Um, it, is, it will be one of the great blessings and joys of my life that I will have had this opportunity to engage with so many fantastic people who are engaged in their communities, want them to be better. Um, and that's been very exciting. Um, the other thing I, I should mention as we move into the other two roles here, um, none of this happens just me. There are lots of people and lots of organizations who have gotten involved in this. And again, that's the only way the Missouri Bicentennial has worked. It's been people who have gotten involved. In addition to all the wonderful folks out in communities across the state, I also want to mention, uh, as most, a lot of you know, uh, for a while, this is pretty much a one-person show out trying to make some things happen. I am exceedingly grateful that in 2020, I had three people added to this team. Um, that included Dick Hartman and Beth Pike, who you're, you know, who is our host um, on the communication side, and Morgan Dennehy on on project coordination. Um, I couldn't do this without these wonderful people, and I am very grateful to them as well. So, in addition to outreach, we play a coordination role. As I mentioned, there's lots of people who are involved in this. So our job has been to kind of, you know, make sure all the ducks stay in a row, make sure everyone stays informed, uh, making sure that you know this project over here knows about this project over here. Um, so we play that role. Our final role is largely communications. Um, so it's, it's our job to maintain the website, to maintain the social media, to um, do things like this. They're sort of sharing the information that's available uh, about all the projects, programs, events, and things that are going on for the Missouri Bicentennial. So that's largely what the State Historical Society kind of does in this. But again, we're not in this alone. Um, so in January of 2018, a group of other statewide nonprofit organizations and government agencies came together and formed a Bicentennial Alliance. This group included the Kinder Institute for Constitutional Democracy, uh, Missouri Humanities Council, Missouri State Archives, Missouri Council for Education, Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and then the State Historical Society of Missouri. Um, and all of these, these folks committed to a supporting the Missouri Bicentennial through, um, through advertising, through sharing resources, but also in building projects that had a statewide reach. Um, and we've been lucky to be able to grow this organization. You can kind of see all the folks who are now involved in it. Um, and, and they're all playing different kinds of roles. Um, for example, the Public Television Association of Missouri is working on a documentary on the history of Missouri. Uh, Missouri State University has put together a program for 2021 that's gonna look at the future of Missouri um, in a number of topics. Uh, Missouri State Library has built a wonderful resource uh, for thinking about Missouri history and kind of what, what those books are and, and other resources to, to engage in that. Um, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm grateful to all these wonderful partners that, that we, have, we have been able to, to pull together uh, to make what I think is a pretty exciting um, bicentennial commemoration. But in addition to the Bicentennial Alliance, in October of 2018, Governor Parson signed into being the Missouri Bicentennial Commission. 
This includes a lot of the, the state agencies you would expect to be there. So it's Department of Natural Resources, Department of Agriculture, Division of Tourism, Secretary of State's Office, Department of Conservation, Missouri State Capital Commission, including a num and a number of, of public appointments. This group is charged with supporting the work of the, Missouri, of the State Historical Society of Missouri, um, as well as, you know, kind of furthering efforts to commemorate the Missouri Bicentennial, and they're doing that in a number of ways. Um, they're supporting a number of projects, and then also they're taking a lead role in planning major events for on and around August 10th, 2021. Uh, so that's the history, mission, vision piece of all of this. Uh, what I think is really important, again, to emphasize is this is not a big top-down kind of setup. Again, the entire Missouri Bicentennial has moved because there's been people all across this state who have gone, you know, I know how this can be a benefit to our community, and I've chosen to get engaged. That is how this has worked. Um, so, what I'm hoping to do today is tell you a little bit about some of the projects, programs, and events uh, that have been going on, and it is just the tip of the iceberg. I don't have time to go through all of the various things, so I hope you'll continue to, to check out our website and the newsletters and all these other things um, that will that'll fill you in even further. Um, but pretty much things fall along three lines. Um, there's sort of community engagement projects, right? What are some projects we could all work on together and hopefully all benefit from together in one way or another? Um, secondly, kind of local, locally and regionally guided commemorations, right? What might you do in your own neighborhood, uh, right? Or your community, your county, your region. Uh, for those of you who remember the nation's bicentennial, this was kind of a large piece of this, this idea of how you could think locally about the much larger thing. I tell people that's why I still run into flagpoles put up in 1976. Um, actually, I was down in Springfield just on Monday and their history museum was a, that, you know, a national bicentennial project came together in 1976. Uh, and then finally, other statewide opportunities for thinking about the life, history, and culture of the state. So most of the projects, programs, and events kind of fall along these, these three lines. Uh, a number of the community engagement projects have um, been going on for several years, and some of them are at a point where they're being shared. Some of them are still active, uh, and some of these you may be familiar with. Um, so the State Historical Society partnered with Missouri Historical Company, um, as well as Missouri State Quilters Guild, to create the Missouri Bicentennial Quilt. Uh, the goal was to, you know, get a quilt block that feature that would feature some aspect of every county uh, in the state. Uh, we had a total of 203 submissions um, in 2018, uh, 2019, uh, from 172 different people in 97 different counties across the state. Um, I think, you know, the final the final product. Um, I think is great because it is, of course, incredibly diverse, which shows you, I think, the various aspects of um, these unique counties, but it's also something that really works well together. Um, it showcases different levels of craft, different levels of skill, um, different age groups. The youngest quilter at the time, I believe, was 14. The oldest, I believe, was 81. Um, in some ways, it, it, it just demonstrates the diversity of the state while kind of all working very, very well uh, together. I hope many of you have, have an, an opportunity to see the quilt. Um, as it's traveling across the state. Um, you can also see all of these quilt blocks on our website, and I'll keep referring back to the website, Missouri2021.org, with all the stories that go with all of these quilt blocks. And in addition to just the quilt, the quilt blocks that are on the actual quilt, we have all of the submissions we received um, up on the website. Uh, the quilt is continuing to tour around the state. Um, you will hear me probably come out and say this multiple times, COVID has had, a, of course, a huge impact um, in terms of the scheduling. Uh, particularly for the quilt because it's going in so many different places. Even, even today we had to make a change. It was supposed to be in, in Holt County uh, on Thursday, but they've had to cancel events due to COVID-19. Um, so the important thing here to note is at least what you're seeing here on the screen is a few upcoming dates here in the rest of, this, of 2020 and just a few select dates in 2021. This is not the extent of all the locations in 2021. I encourage you to stay up to date on our social media and our website because this kind of continues to change. Uh, but I wanted to give some sense of at least geographically where, where the quote will be um, in 2021. Uh, in addition to that, we did a photograph project. So the My Missouri 2021 photograph project. We wanted something that a nine-year-old could do or a 99-year-old person could do. And because most of us are carrying around our, our cell, uh, cell phones uh, that all are camera equipped, almost anyone could do this. And so the idea was to show us your Missouri. Um, you know, show uh, kind of what makes your place unique. And of course, we got lots of wonderful, fantastic photographs of the Gateway Arch. But even more important and more impressive are family farms, our community festivals, our other kinds of commemoration. And it's just absolutely fantastic. We, we I think we got 998 uh, photographs all together from 301 different contributors in 91 different counties um, who all took the time to share kind of what it was that they thought was uh, important about their their communities. You can see all 998 photographs on our website. 
Um, the State Historical Society selected 200 of these photographs for permanent preservation here at the State Historical Society. So hopefully available to teachers, students, and researchers for generations to come. And then 200, these 200 are also traveling across the state um, as an exhibition called My Missouri 2021. I should also briefly mention, uh, if you saw our introduction, we were able to showcase a number of these fantastic photographs. Um, again, just sort of the tip of the iceberg, but we had photographs in that introduction from Nicholas Becker, Deanne Beavers, um, Karen Dodson, Todd Irwin, Sarah Maurer, Hal Moran, uh, George Pettigrew, Justin Riley, Kevin Roberson, and Stephen Stouch. Um, and again, all fantastic and just the tip of the iceberg. So I hope you'll go and enjoy that. The exhibition, we are extremely grateful uh, to Shelter Insurance, uh, which was able to shoulder a good chunk of the costs for having the exhibition. Again, what's interesting about the exhibition, it is oriented around the seasons. So we wanted to do something that wasn't, again, sort of emphasizing geographic diversity, but something that we share. And those seasons are things we share. So in the fall, it is harvest time, um, whether it is cotton, whether it is corn, whether it is timber. Um, in the summer, it is these festivals all across the state. Uh, again, hoping to see sort of hopefully some points of shared somethingness. Um, on the next screen is just sort of where this show will be in 2021. Um, for those of you who have not had an opportunity to see this, just to give you a sense of, of where the show will be. Again, please check out our website. If anything, if there are changes to this, that is where that will be um, noted and it will also be communicated through our, our social media channels as well. Um, I'm also wanting to point out, if you're looking at the screen here, my favorite part of taking this thing across the state is getting to meet either the quilters or the photographers. Um, it was kind of fun to, this two photographs there are from um, an event in Chillicothe uh, where we got to meet some of the photograph photographers, it was a lot of fun. Um, some of you may also know about the Missouri Bicentennial Poster Competition. This was a project of the Missouri Bicentennial Commission, uh, open to third through 12th graders in Missouri. Um, the deadline for submissions was October 31st. We had, I believe, about 183 submissions altogether uh, from, I believe, 44 different counties. Um, basically, what's going to happen here is just they are going to choose, the commission is going to choose four final designs. Um, two in the elementary category, so third through sixth grade, and two in the high school or secondary ed category, so sixth through twelfth. Um, each of these folks are going to get $200. Uh, Hallmark uh, Creative Marketing Studios is going to take the design and give the poster art its final look. These will be freely downloadable on the website uh, for people who want to use them, uh, whether it's for events or just to put up in your home. Um, you will be welcome to do that. Um, again, I'm going to say this as a history guy, $200 is really neat, but I think the bigger prize altogether is, well, I should say, when I started this job, one of the first things I was interested in is what did we do 100 years ago, right? Um, and pulled out some, you know, the wonderful poster art from uh, 1921, um, right? And what I think is so, so what I think is really kind of the big selling point here is um, after we're all gone, these four designs are going to be kind of part of the iconography of the Missouri Bicentennial and what other people will turn to as they think about a Missouri Tricentennial. Um, you can see all of the poster submissions um, on our website. We still have some that we're continuing to add, um, but stay tuned. We should be making an announcement in, in January about the final winners. So um, a couple of these are still active and I hope you'll find ways to participate. Uh, St. Louis Ambassadors in partnership with the State Historical Society are doing a bicentennial time capsule. Um, this you know, is open to organizations, businesses, government agencies, really all kinds of different groups. And the idea is to send us three things an item to represent your past, an item to represent your present, and then a note to the future. Um, we've received a, our first entry not too terribly long ago from Harold's Vittles in Salem, Missouri. Uh, Family-owned business, um, they smoked meats and barbecue sauces. Um, they send us a note, um, a, a, little, a little page telling us sort of the history of, of the family business and how they got started. They sent us labels for all of their current barbecue sauces. And then this note to the future that talks about how important this business has been to them and how they hope that their grandchildren, great grandchildren will be able to continue it. Um, that it's an honor to be part of Missouri's economy and they hope they can continue to do that. Um, so it's an easy way to get involved, but hopefully also a meaningful way to get involved. Uh, we'll be taking submissions and you fill out an online form uh, on our website uh, before sending your stuff in, but we're taking submissions through August 10th, 2021. St. Louis ambassadors are gonna host a, a concluding ceremony on August 27th, uh, 2021. The time capsule is gonna stay with the State Historical Society for 25 years, uh, and then we'll be opened up again um, for researchers, hopefully and teachers and students to use, hopefully for, again, for years to come. Um, in addition to that one, uh, we're also doing a project called Missouri Community Legacies. Um, in some ways, a different kind of time capsule. We are asking people to document um, 
local traditions, creative expressions, meaningful places, organizations, and institutions that are significant to your community, your county, or your region uh, of the state. And so he's really hopefully producing a snapshot of Missouri at this moment. Uh, and there's all kinds of different activities and things that would sort of fall into this. Um, you'll see on the screen, uh, Juneteenth in Kansas City. Of course, Juneteenth is a nationally celebrated uh, day, celebrating June 19th, 1865, uh, the day the last group of enslaved people in Galveston, Texas, heard about the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, as again, sort of celebrated across across the country. But in Kansas City, um, our, started in, our modern celebration started in 1980. Um, and so the, the Juneteenth community legacy uh, thing is again, sort of about the present. So it's a documentation about uh, kind of what did Juneteenth look like in 2018, um, including some photographs and a, kind of a short history and a description of what was going on, some newspaper clippings, the, the souvenir program for that year, um, all kinds of different things. Uh, but also, it could be a meaningful place to a community. Um, you'll see on the screen Maplewood Barn Theater uh, here in Columbia, which is um, kind of the community theater um, in the area. Finally, it could also be organizations and institutions, right? What are these? What are the organizations and groups that make your community a meaningful place? Uh, Phelps County Historical Society is one is one example of this. Um, Again, sort of all kinds of things that would fit into this. Uh, I do want to make a shout out to the Missouri Society uh, Daughters of the American Revolution who have done a fantastic job of helping to advertise and having their chapters work on um, on these Missouri Community Legacies projects. And you can find all of them that have been turned in so far uh, on the website. You can read the reports, see some of the photographs. And again, this will be a collection that will be available to people for hopefully years to come. Um, so that's kind of leg number one, right? So projects we'd all work on together and hopefully all benefit from together in one way or another. So leg number two would be what might you do locally uh, or regionally uh, to commemorate the Missouri Bicentennial? So early on, we developed uh, the Missouri 2021 endorsement program, uh, which primarily built a media partnership between um, Missouri 2021 and another organization uh, for projects, programs, and events related to the mission of the Missouri Bicentennial. Um, which you'll recall is to promote a better understanding of Missouri's communities, counties, regions, people, past and present, right? We kept it really wide open for lots of people, lots of things to fit in there. Because uh, we knew the starting place for most people was no time, no money, and no labor. Um, in fact, as I traveled across the state, I have yet to find anyone who says, Michael, I am just sitting on buckets of cash and we have people standing around with nothing to do. Uh, so, right, the idea was, okay, you're already doing some neat things. How can you take that and maybe give it a bicentennial spin? That was the initial thought. Um, but people have thought well beyond that. Uh, bicentennials, more than anything else, are you know a reason to do something. Um, you know, so your 49th and 51st birthday are great, but man, there's something special about your 50th. Um, so if that's true, you know, how can you use that energy and that excitement to move something forward, uh, to complete a project, to to rally the forces, to make something happen? And a lot of folks across the state have have done that. At this point, um, we've had I believe 104 applications we've approved. Um, from 44 different counties, all kinds of different projects, programs, and events. And I want to give you um, some sense of, so, you know, what might you do? Well, there's, of course, all kinds of different things you can do. Uh, here's some ideas up on the page. I've always hesitated to give ideas because it limits what you think you might be able to do. This is, again, just a tip of an iceberg, right? Uh, it could be digitizing historic collections, uh, much like Green County Archives is doing, taking some of their most prized items and getting them digitized and available for the public to use. Um, you could create a city, a countywide scavenger hunt, right? Hold a salute to veterans, clean up a cemetery, create an oral history project. Clinton County is doing um, an oral history project. Um, host a performance of Missouri music. Sky's kind of the limit uh, on what this could be. Um, I do want to mention a few things. So when we started this, we it really was kind of set up for um, you know local and regional things, not necessarily big statewide things. And I should have recognized that that would have been uh, one of the things that came out of this. Uh, a good example of this is the Missouri Bicentennial Mural. Uh, this was a project of two artists in Cape Girardeau, um, Aaron Harrell, Barb Bailey. They have sketched out a large mural of, I believe, 12 feet by 30 feet showcasing state symbols. So the honeybee, the ice cream cone, um, the mule, the paddlefish. And they have been traveling across the state trying to get as many people as possible to paint on. They think they need 20,000 people uh, to get this thing done. I got some photographs of folks on their painting. You'll see that everybody gets their little triangle, and they handed their brush and their paint, and they go to town. Um, the Missouri Bicentennial Commission is going is hopefully going to be able to help them find a permanent home for this in Jeff City. Um, so again, sort of this project that lots of people got to work on um, and that we get to enjoy for many, many years to come. But again, when it emerged locally, didn't didn't come from a big statewide organization. This emerged locally and was endorsed back in 20, um, 2018. Another example of a locally project that has sort of statewide significance is the Bicentennial Bridge to Adrian's Island. 
Um, this is a project of the city of Jefferson City. It will, um, it's building a bridge from the Capitol complex down to Adrian's Island. Um, in some ways trying to restore the city's historic connection to, um, to the river um, and to the island. And there's gonna be a public park on, on the island. Um, that would be a good example. Uh, showing the music, this is a, a project of the Sheldon Foundation in St. Louis uh, in collaboration with the Night Network, which is the PBS station there in St. Louis. Uh, they are hosting a concert of Missouri music in May of, 20, of um, 2021, which they're gonna film and turn into a documentary that then can be shown on the PBS stations across the state. Uh, Missouri Art Now, this is a fantastic project. Uh, one of the project of the Albright Kemper Museum in St. Joe, the Hannibal Arts Council, the Post Art Library in Joplin, the Southeast Missouri Arts Council in Cape Toronto, and Spiva Arts Center in Joplin. And basically these, these four communities, um, the organizations in these four communities are going to uh, curate 15 pieces of local art from their region, right? Working artists. We think of Missouri art, we of course think of Benton and Bingham and a wonderful set of, of historical figures. But Missouri continues to be this place of visual arts production. Uh, and this provides an opportunity to showcase that. And the show will travel to those four communities over 2021 and will also be here at the Center for Missouri Studies here in Columbia. One last example. Um, so the Florescent uh, Valley of the uh, Flowers Festival, uh, which is a yearly festival there in Florescent. The 2021 theme for that is going to be the Missouri Bicentennial. So it's a good example of taking what is the big festival of the year and giving it a bicentennial spin. Um, just very briefly, this is here to sort of show a bit of the geographic uh, diversity of this. This by no means is all 104. Um, and I hope you'll go to our website and check out um, a lot of these great projects that are going on. Um, so that's leg number two. Leg number three are sort of other opportunities for thinking about the life history and culture of the state. A lot of it is the work of the Bicentennial Alliance and the Bicentennial Commission. Uh, I want to mention the Struggle for Statehood exhibit. This is a project of the Kinder Institute for Constitutional Democracy and Missouri Humanities Council. Um, the exhibition, uh, the Struggle for Statehood, deals with the four years that led up to statehood when Missouri was sort of at the center of the national story um, as, as it continued to think about the future of the institution of slavery. Um, the expansion and expansion West. Um, it does a wonderful job of taking what is sometimes a very complicated history and making it very, very accessible. Uh, it is moving about the state. I have listed um, the sites, some upcoming sites where it will be um, right now at the Lexington Arts Council, but next to the Cape River Heritage Museum um, in late December and, and January. Uh, you can also experience this online. They have done a digital version, uh, which you can see the website um, address on there. You can also access it through the Missouri 2021 website. Um, Missouri State Archives has done a wonderful digital exhibit called our Bicentennial History, um, showcasing 200 different documents and photographs that tell Missouri's story. Um, it is organized through um, a number of themes, which you can see here on the screen, with progress, society, adversity, people. Um, it is a wonderful opportunity, again, to sort of engage in Missouri history in a way that's very convenient for us, particularly during COVID-19. Um, so I hope you'll take an opportunity to um, see that and experience it. You can do that through the state, um, uh, Secretary of State's office website, or you can do that by way of the Missouri 2021 website. Oh, love this. So Missouri Folk Arts Program um, is, is, was assigned uh, the Missouri um, grant evaluator for a project called Legends and Lore, which is a project of, of the Pomeroy Foundation. Um, Pomeroy Foundation is trying to document uh, local folklore, legends, um, local dances, local food, things, again, sort of that, those folk traditions. Um, and we're working, you know, to Missouri Folk Arts Program is working to get to Missouri uh, local folklore and legends on the map. Um, there are two grant cycles in 2021. Um, Missouri Folk Arts Program will work with you to, to write, basically write the grant and describe what legend or, or folklore you're wanting to document. Um, they're also part of the evaluation team. The grant will provide basically for a marker, uh, very similar to what you're seeing shape-wise on, on the screen there uh, that'll document um, that. Whether it is the underground city in Moberly, whether it is the spook light down in uh, Neosho, uh, the Nocio area. Uh, it could be all kinds of things, uh, but I'm, I, I want to see Missouri on the map here, and I'm hoping uh, you'll think about this for your local community and contact Missouri Folk Arts Program about how to get involved in it. Um, I spent a lot of time sort of talking about projects that sort of focus, you know, kind of focus on on kind of the diversity of the state. The Missouri Bicentennial Commission um, looked to do a project that would be a uniting force across the state. Um, they have create, uh, created this, these banners uh, based on a design from the Secretary of State's office. Um, unique in that each of them is, is for a different county and, and mentions the date of organization, but united in the message about um, 
kind of what the importance of the Missouri Bicentennial, what it provides to our communities, to our counties, uh, and the opportunity to, to think about, again, sort of our shared somethingness. These are being distributed to all of the county courthouses. In addition to that, um, there's also a Bicentennial flag, basically what looks like the blue portion of, of these banners uh, that'll be provided to, to the county courthouses as well. Uh, a number of weeks have been designated for flying the flag, and we hope that, again, it provides a sort of unifying force uh, across the Missouri Bicentennial. Also, you may have recently heard of the United States Postal Service will be issuing uh, a Missouri Bicentennial stamp. Um, they announced this just, just last month. Um, stamp, so it's part of their 2021 um, stamp program. You can see the preliminary design here uh, by Art Director Greg Breeding and based on a photograph uh, by landscape photographer Charles uh, Gersh showing Bollinger Mill uh, there in Cape County. Um, a date has not been set for the date of release on this, but it will be coming in, in 2021. Um, finally, the last thing I want to mention here before I kind of come to a pause, um, there's, of course, all kinds of ideas about what we might do on and around August 10th, 2021, actual statehood day. I would caution, though I'm about to tell you, sort of still a bit preliminary. We're trying to see how COVID-19 kind of factors into this, but a number of, of things are sort of in the works. First Missouri State Capitol, uh, State Historic Site uh, in St. Charles is gonna be hosting uh, an event August 7th, Saturday, August 7th, 2021, largely a family festival, parade, um, a few other things. Um, Center for Missouri Studies in collaboration with uh, MU and uh, the City of Columbia are looking into doing a long weekend uh, of Friday, August 6th through Sunday, August 8th. Um, this would include some, some bigger things such as an evening of Missouri music, uh, perhaps an all-star college baseball game. Um, we're looking at doing an ecumenical Christian service um, at, at some, uh, on Sunday. Um, but also we're hoping it's an opportunity to bring together a lot of the projects, programs, and events um, that have been happening across the state and find ways to get those things shared. Um, in addition to showing off our bicentennial quilt, Phelps County did its own quilt. Texas County has done its own quilt. Missouri State Parks is doing a bicentennial quilt. 4-H is doing a bicentennial quilt. This will be an opportunity to see all of those things together. Um, in addition to the documentary I mentioned at the very top, um, uh, documentary is being put together on the history of Missouri music. Would it be a great opportunity to sort of see a number of these productions, um, these documentaries shown, shown publicly. Um, a number of new um, musical and dramatic works are being created for the Missouri Bicentennial, so an opportunity to have those shown. I think it'd be a great time to bring all these kind of projects together for us all to enjoy and to think about. Um, Statehood Day is actually August 10th, 2021, which is a Tuesday. Um, and so a number of activities are gonna be held in, in Jefferson City on, at the Capitol Complex and the surrounding area. Uh, and finally, Missouri State Fair in 2021 will be themed to the Missouri Bicentennial. Um, so that's kind of how this, the bigger events are, are shaping up at the moment. And we hope to have more information we can share with you about those in January. Um, I've talked nonstop at a rapid pace now for probably about 20 minutes. Um, before I, I open this up for questions, uh, I do want to mention a few other things. Um, probably the most important thing you can take away from this is please go to our website, Missouri2021.org, your gateway to all things Bicentennial. I have given you the tip of the iceberg. There are all kinds of projects, programs, events that I did not mention that you're going to find an opportunity to think about and learn about and hopefully enjoy uh, through the Missouri 2021 website. It's, it's largely there to get people in and hopefully get people back out to, to the various things. You will find on the various uh, engaged, there's an engagement tab, you'll find you know all of the photographs we received for the Missouri 2021 photograph project. You will see all of the bicentennial poster submissions we received. You will see all of the quilt blocks we received. You'll also find information about the endorsement program um, and how to fill out the online application. It'll also give you a sense of what the endorsed projects are right now. Um, gives you some ideas, some ideas that other people have had. In addition to that, we have a projects tab that goes through all of the various projects that are going on, whether those community engagement projects, these statewide projects, or things that are happening on a local or regional level. You will also find an events tab uh, that will go in a very similar fashion through the various events that are happening across the state. Um, finally, we do have a calendar tab um, that you will see all the various things that are sort of going on on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, this continues to expand, uh, and I hope you'll have an opportunity to look at and enjoy that. Um, finally, um, in addition to the website, we're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I did not have any of these things before I started this job. Uh, I think my wife was very pleased to see me pulled kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Um, I say that as, I mean, somewhat comically, but actually these have become really important communication tools in ways I never imagined. Um, if you want to stay up to date on a daily basis, 
the social media platforms that are really your best way to do it. There is something new every day on there. When things change, um, it will be announced there first. Um, so that's one way to sort of, of you know, stay up to date on that. Wonderful, Michael. I think that gives us a really good overview of what's happening. And, and as you mentioned, there's so much more. Um, this is a good time to ask uh, questions of Michael. You can just do so here and uh, in the chat session, and and uh, I'll pose a question here to Michael, kind of in the order it's received. Uh, but I'll just kind of start right off, Michael. Um, what have you discovered about Missouri after traveling to each county that maybe you didn't know or maybe wasn't as apparent before you began your work with the Bicentennial? Oh, gosh. A um, couple things. Um I grew up in Kansas City, and Kansas City is my home. And, you know, I think I've, we we've tend to often think about um, urban rural divide as being kind of our big, our big thing. Um, you know, there's kind of Kansas City, St. Louis. So that's, this is my ignorant understanding, Kansas City, St. Louis, and the rest of the state. Uh, I am ever more impressed by our communities across this state that are dynamic, that are doing awesome and amazing things. Um, I think we as a state don't often appreciate that. Um, there is that sort of fragmented nature of the state um, for, ge for geographic and cultural reasons. Uh, it would behoove us, I think, to get to know each other better um, and to think about, I think, our fellow Missourians more. It's, it is that kind of basis that then helps us solve common problems that we, we have. So, I mean, that's, that's been, I think, the real great takeaway, uh, that we are, we are hardly flyover country. We are amazing uh, groups of people. So. so, Michael, we do have some questions, a lot about the quilt, wanting to know whether or not that's going to be coming to their area. There is, I'm trying to, I would have to go back and look at the calendar. Again, we've, we've kind of only released a little bit at a time, again, because it kind of constantly changes. Um, uh, even today, like I said, it was supposed to be in, in uh, Holt County on Thursday, and that is no longer the case. I found that out today. Um, so we've been a little slow in sort of releasing that. Um, I would say if people have questions about specific locations uh, and whether the quilt is going there, I'm happy to probably have that conversation, particularly if you have a number of, of questions about it. Um, if they want to email the contact at Missouri2021.org, I'm happy to field those. Probably that way would be best. Because if it's That's not, we can figure out a way to make that happen. Yes, exactly. And there's some that want to know about the photo. So yeah, that would be the best way. If you want to see any of the exhibits, um, go ahead and email at that uh, info number. And uh, Michael, will get back with you on that and see what we can do to work you in. Um, let's see. What other questions do we have? Let's see. I think the website also has information about using the Missouri Bicentennial logo for branding products and events. You might want to let people know about where to look for official branding. Good question. Um, so yes, there are opportunities if you'd like to use the Missouri Bicentennial logo on commercial products that are being sold for profit. Um, under the About tab on the website, you'll find information about licensing um, the logo. There's an online application that you fill out. Uh, the Missouri Bicentennial Commission is the official kind of licensing body, so they, re we, you know, they review those applications um, as needed. Um, and I would encourage if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. It's our job to help you. I, it's, my, I, it's our desire that you're successful and get what you need. So if you have questions about the application or ideas, then we can go back and forth. We'll find a way to, make mo I think we can make most things happen. Well, here's, here's a good uh, question for you, Michael, to kind of test your knowledge on Missouri history. Oh boy. Uh, it comes from John in Oklahoma. Who do you nope. think was the most influential Missourian during the first 100 years, as well as maybe the last 100 years? Hmm. Most okay. influential. Oh gosh, there are so many. Uh, um, let's see. I'm trying to. I'm trying to avoid just naming off my favorite Missourians. Um, I'm gonna go with. I'll go with Dred Scott on this one, um, and the implications that the Dred Scott case here in Missouri had for the rest of the nation. Um, it is that thing that Missouri sort of stood at the center of, of the national story um, for a good chunk of the 19th century. Um, and I think the Dred Scott story in particular, um, suing for his freedom and, and, and um, how that, those suits failed in Missouri um, and ultimately went to the Supreme Court, the ramifications of that, I think, make him one of the most influential Missourians of the uh, 19th century. Uh, and you said you have some favorites. You want to let I, us know who I your have favorites. Lots are? of favorites. <laughs> okay. Usually, the um, usually the next one I meet is my favorite. Yeah, exactly. It, it is. It's like picking your favorite child or something. So, 
Um, one person wrote down the branding process has been very easy. So that's good to know. So if, if you come across anything that's been challenging, let us know that too. With what works, we, we're glad to know things work easy. But if you're having difficulties, yeah, keep us informed because we're tweaking things along the way. Often, oftentimes, I mean, things that make perfect sense to us do not make sense on a user's end. So the more information we have about that process and kind of how it's worked and not worked is good for us to know. Okay. Uh, we had uh, Anna Gall ask, does St. Charles County or the city of St. Charles have any projects uh, with Bicentennial? Well, we know they're going to host the first. To my, to my knowledge at, at the moment, um, that is the one that sort of sticks out in my mind. I am not mm -hmm. aware of any other projects, programs, or events that are sort of um, associated with St. Charles. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to have to ask for forgiveness because um, I think St. Peter's is in St. Charles County, not St. Louis County. Um, and they are doing an art, um, they got an endorsement application for their, their an art exhibition in 2021, if I remember right. And people can search there by county as well. So there, it filters out the counties if you wanna know what's happening in particular county. Um, another person, Sherry asked, are the libraries involved? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> um, in, in multiple ways. Um, <laughs> First off, I should mention that libraries were kind of my, one of my main points of contact in most communities. Um, public libraries in particular end up being these anchors in their communities, and they've often been the ones who have been hosting programming. They're the ones who have been hosting the Bicentennial Quilt. They're the ones that have been hosting the My Missouri 21 Photograph Project um, exhibition, right? They Because they are these community centers. In addition to that, I know there is some conversation about summer reading in 2021. Um, and how that might um, have a bicentennial theme to it. Again, there's sort of, I, it's not been finalized, but there's conversation about that. Um, I would also want to give a huge shout out to Missouri State Library. There's been a huge supporter that has helped us spread the word um, that on their end have kind of helped develop this wonderful resource for engaging in Missouri history. Um, part of the State Library is Wolfner um, um, Library for, for the Visually Impaired. Um, they are coming up with resources and programming to, to serve um, those members of our of our, our fellow citizens. So uh, yes, libraries are amazing and librarians rock. And and you're sitting in a beautiful library, <laughs> actually, at the State Historical Society, our research center. So um, now the question was, do we have any volunteer uh, possibilities for people who want to volunteer um, with the Bicentennial? So any opportunities? There's not, I think the reason it kind of worked out that way um, is because so much of this is locally driven, um, right? I mean, we have a number of kind of projects that we've put together that have largely been, a lot of it virtually based and people sending in stuff. Um, a lot of, you know, the work that's happening is happening on a local level. Now, having said that, um, I do not want to close off possibilities. Um, part of it's going to be, be seeing how things develop COVID-wise and how that affects uh, kind of these bigger events that we're planning for August, uh, because I think there would be volunteer opportunities associated with that, uh, but it's still an unknown at the moment. And uh, Patricia asked, are there bicentennial lesson plans available for teachers? I know we have the yeah. constitutional quiz. There is the constitution quiz that was put together by the Missouri uh, Supreme Court, uh, which you can find on our website, but also Missouri Council for um, History Education has developed new lesson plans, primarily third through fifth graders, uh, called Four Years to Statehood. Um, so dealing again sort of with the statehood crisis, but from an elementary school point of view, um, you can access it through their website, on the Missouri Council for Education website. You can also get to it through the Missouri 2021 website. Uh, it is freely downloadable. Uh, the organizers are interested in doing teacher workshops um, on this sort of as requested. Um, that's uh, the one that kind of sticks out in my mind at the moment. Okay, great. And something I think that will be useful for teachers when we get it on our website here in January is that we're developing a timeline of Missouri history. So that is, uh, I think that will be very useful. And there's also through the State Historical Society, the Historic Missourians. So you can learn a lot about those events, both you will on our website and at shsmo.org. So um, question from Lori, is there a particular point person in each county or organization who coordinates the efforts of the interesting, of, of interest of various individuals or groups, and are they listed? Uh, they are not, and I want to kind of explain the reasoning behind that. Um, so the State Historical Society, for the most part, we uh, tend to partner with other historical societies, uh, but not every county has a strong historical society, one. 
Um, so as we did our outreach, a lot of it was about who was willing to engage with us. Um, sometimes it was the Arts Council, sometimes it was the Community Betterment Group, sometimes it was the Chamber of Commerce, sometimes it was the Public Library, sometimes it was the Public School System, sometimes it, you know, it was all kinds of different people. Um, so it tended to be who was sort of the strongest organization that wanted to take a lead and make something go. Um, and that's kind of how a lot of this has happened. Uh, again, largely because I think the communities know what makes them run better than I ever will. Um, and I was very, very hesitant to assign someone or to say we're, we're doing county commissions. Um, part of this kind of been pretty sui generis in terms of how this has come together. Okay. So there's not and, necessarily a list of here's who you need to contact. In some cases, you might be the person that needs to be contacted. If you're the one who wants to make something move, you can do so. Um, that's sometimes how that works. And I will, I will add this. I mean, the other thing that's been a, a big learning experience um, was you know, communities that are able to partner with other organizations in their communities, I have found tend to be the, the most successful in trying to make some projects, programs, and events go. Um, you know, if, um, for, I mean, we're pretty much at a period where everyone's got meager resources, so you have to figure out ways to sort of work together. Um, so those communities that have, um, are able to engage with, the, you know, where the historical site can engage with the library, and the library engages with the county commission, the county commission engages with the chair, right? those tend to be ones that are able to make some things move. And uh, what about a list of historical societies around the state? How would somebody learn about that? So two answers uh, that are in contradict to each other. As I recall, there is on the State Historical Society of uh, Missouri's website, a list of um, historical societies. Um, I believe it is in need of updating, um, particularly throughout the last couple years. And this year in particular, and the impact that again, COVID has had on funding these organizations and keeping them moving. Um, so there, I, I, would, I, I believe there needs, I don't want to say that list is definitive. Um, and also Robin Ziegler asked, is there any news oh. about having county quilts? Oh, go ahead. How many, uh, one second. Um, I do want to mention uh, the Missouri uh, Association for Museums and Archives. Um, as, a, as a statewide organization, they also have, I, I think, a, a really good handle on those historical organizations across the state. Um, again, it's, it's a partial list that they're going to be able to provide you, but I, they're also a really good resource for, for finding that out. And so Robin wants to know if there's any updates on County Quilt hey, Robin. with Missouri Quilt at the Capitol or other locations. A, a hello to Robin and man, the Phelps County quilt is so awesome. Um, and I hope you're getting it around and about. Um, nothing definitive in terms of having it at the Capitol. There again, we're sort of kind of in a conversation state, probably in the spring is what we're gonna be looking at. I'm hoping that's gonna be finalized again here in the next month or so. Um, it really is a goal to sort of have a lot of things finalized come January. So people do have a better sense of what's happening. But at this point, Robin, it's still a conversation. Um, and I know we probably talked when we were together that I do want you, I'm hoping you are also reserving August 6th through the 8th um, as an opportunity to also show off that, that quote with the Missouri Bicentennial quilt here in Columbia. Uh, and Sherry Blaine asks, will the U.S. flag with 24 stars be available for sale? You know, anybody selling that? Not from us. For the most part, um, I think this was a conscious choice on the part of the commission and certainly on the part of the State Historical Society was not to get into the retail business. Um, so we have certainly pointed people, personally, frankly, people are using the Bicentennial logo. We tend to point people to them. Uh, so we're not selling that flag, though that flag is available at a number of places around the state, um, but not something that's coming directly from us. Thank you all so much for joining us this hour. And a very big thank you to Michael Sweeney for being our first guest in this series, which we'll have on Zoom the first Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. We'll spotlight different programs and events that are happening uh, next year with guests who can tell us more about their organization or community involvement to commemorate the state bicentennial. And how you can take part in the bicentennial, that is important, we want you involved. You will need to register for each program on Zoom by going to either Missouri21.org to direct you to the online registration, or you'll find it at shsmo.org, along with all of the other interesting virtual programs offered by the State Historical Society of Missouri. We certainly look forward to circling the wagons with you again on Tuesday, January 5th, for Missouri 2021 Presents. 
In the meantime, everyone, please stay safe, and we hope you are in good health this holiday season, connected by your loved ones, even if remotely as we are today. Goodbye for now.